Hey, what's up, YouTube? What I want to talk to you guys today about is what to expect at a hospital interview for a phlebotomist job. Now, for those of you who don't know me, allow me to introduce myself. No, my name isn't Hove, <laughs> but uh, my name is Croy, like the island St. Croy, and I am a nationally certified phlebotomist. I have five years experience. I've worked in hospitals, laboratories, doctor's offices, nursing homes, and clinics. So when it comes to phlebotomy, I do have a lot of experience. Um, as far as interviews go, um, I've been on many phlebotomy interviews. Um, I've been on about three interviews at a hospital. Um, I believe one of them was actually for the job, but the other two were just for like a future reference, you know, just so I would know, you know, how those hospitals um, conduct interviews for a phlebotomy position. Um, so in this video here, I, I will be referencing a hospital interview as opposed to a lab or anywhere else because from those hospital interviews that I've been on and interviews at laboratories, I feel that a hospital interview um, presents a bigger challenge. You know, I feel like, I feel like you know, um, you need more and better preparation when it comes to a hospital interview as opposed to an interview, you know, anywhere else for a phlebotomy position. So that's why I'm using the hospital to give you guys a heads up, you know, um, and keep you one step ahead. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. When it comes to hospital interviews uh, for a phlebotomy job, and I would guess for any other job in the hospital, you're gonna have at least two interviews. And uh, as far as phlebotomy go, um, your first interview is going to be with human resources. At this interview, you're not gonna meet with anyone from the lab uh, or anywhere else for that matter. It's just gonna be one person from HR. And what they're gonna be discussing are basically your skills, your qualifications, and your availability. That's pretty much it. Um, they're not gonna bombard you with, you know, trick questions. Um, it's pretty, they're not gonna pretty much catch you off guard with anything. You know, it's just gonna be very basic. Um, and the reason for that is because there's another interview pretty much already lined up for you. As long as you don't, you know, do anything really stupid or say anything stupid or, you know, outrageous, you know, just be yourself. And you just pretty much gotta be a yes person in this first interview. You know, oh, Mr. Jones, I see that, you know, you work here and there as a phlebotomist, yes. Um, oh, so you've drawn, you know, let's say 300 patients altogether, yes. That's pretty much it in your first interview. Um, but what you need to keep in mind is that you are interviewing with someone from HR and not the phlebotomy department. And I say that to say this, when the interview is coming to an end, and uh, that human resources uh, person says to you, do you have any questions? In which you should, of course. Keep in mind that they're not gonna be able to answer questions directly related to phlebotomy. For example, if you ask them a question like, uh, what are the daily tasks and responsibilities here at the hospital working as a phlebotomist? they're not gonna know that because they don't work in phlebotomy, they work in HR. You know, don't ask him, don't ask them, well, what does it take, you know, for me to excel at this position and, and be become a supervisor or manager? They're not gonna know. But you can ask them questions regarding HR. Like, um, ask them about availability, you know, um, overtime you can ask them you know what is their policy on overtime you can ask them about your benefit package um 401k how how do they match it 
Um, you can even ask them about uh, relocating, you know, if need be. If you and your family were ever moving and maybe the hospital had some account somewhere with some doctor's offices or something, you know, you may have to relocate. So that can be something you want to talk to them about. But in summary, you know, just be a yes person and uh, just keep it simple. And you'll be on your way to your second interview. Now, your second interview is a bit more challenging. Um, in this interview here, you will be meeting with the lab director or lab supervisor manager. Yeah, the lab supervisor manager, not the director. And you may also be meeting with a potential coworker of yours. And I will explain why the coworker is there later on in this video. Um, in this second interview, your skills and qualifications are a thing of the past, okay? They pretty much know that you have the skills and qualifications to perform phlebotomy. They know that. It's already been established. What they need to know now is if you are a great fit in a company. And how are they going to find that out? Is by asking you questions and these questions may be a bit tricky to be honest with you um, you may get stumped on a few um, for example they are going to ask you situational and behavioral questions now what the difference is is a situational question is exactly how it sounds they're gonna ask you a question based around a certain situation for example a situational question um, how do you um, no describe a time when you had to work with a difficult co-worker how was it and how well did you do that's a situational question because you are in a tight situation you working with somebody you know who is difficult to work with so that's a difficult situation to be in. A behavioral question will be something like this. Um, how do you deal with angry, disgruntled, upset patients? You know, does your behavior change? Do you start to become irate and uh, get out of character, this, that, and the third? So that's the difference. Just think about a situation and then think about a behavior something that's gonna you know challenge your behavior as as a person so those are the questions you're gonna get pretty much situational and behavioral questions because these questions that they're asking you are questions that probably every phlebotomist I would say with at least three years have experienced at least one time I myself I've experienced working with co-workers who were difficult many many times and uh, it was a lot sooner than three years, I'll tell you that. It was probably within the first few days. Um, and um, dealing with those angry, disgruntled patients, you may experience, you may encounter that, you know, within your first few days. Maybe within your first few hours, you may experience that. So these questions are on point for the job position. Um, now, also, I need to tell you this. And it's very important. When you are on this second interview, don't try to make yourself seem to be the Einstein of phlebotomy. And what I mean by that is don't make yourself seem like you're a know-it-all, you this, you that. You know, pretty much keep it mediocre, all right? Keep it mediocre. I know T.I. say he don't want no mediocre. Well, guess what? You need mediocre. In this position right here all right you, you need mediocre hair all right just throwing some little humor but all seriousness yeah because if you start to make yourself seem like you are the Einstein of phlebotomy you know this you know that then they're gonna step their game up and they're gonna start asking you very challenging questions that's probably gonna end up stumping you they're probably gonna ask you a question like this if you start to take it up a notch you can expect questions like this. Okay, so Mr. Jones, um, 
What is the proper order of draw? Um, what are the three main veins used in phlebotomy? Bang. You know, what is it called when you have to draw out of someone's hand? What veins are you using in their hands? Some supervisors will do this on an interview. So just keep it basic and just keep yourself, you know, as an average phlebotomist. Ain't no reason, you know, to try to, you know, take it to that next level. You made it to the second interview, all right? So obviously they like you. They pretty much want to hire you, all right? So there you have it, my friends. Now, remember when I said about um, your coworker? Now, if a coworker is there, a potential coworker, that is for answering questions at the end of the interview. Now, even though the lab supervisor or manager knows what goes on in a laboratory, of course, but the coworker is somebody you're gonna be potentially working with, and they can tell you more in detail exactly what's going on and you know what you have to do and what's required of you with that position so that's why you may uh, be interviewing with a co-worker as well so again second interview um, you may get some tricky questions um, your skills and qualifications really don't matter they just want to know if you're a good fit you will get situational and behavioral questions um, be yourself Keep it average, and uh, you'll be fine. Any questions, comments, let me know. I'll help you the best I can. Good luck.